My mother was a pagan She lived like a long time ago My dad was a Vulcan And that I know for High on a mountain tower Among the clouds My mother died at 90 My dad he up He often gone away Sitting back and the galactic boogie band Sitting back and the galactic boogie band Well, I beamed in. Here we are in uh, Massachusetts Amherst uh, University. Uh, we got a little another convention here, like like not just another con. And uh, well, it's gonna be an interesting convention. There are people to meet, and places to go, and things to happen here. And uh, well, this is Zenbox at Zenbox Fantasy Fi. So I'm gonna see what kind of trouble I can get into. Come with me. Well, let's have a chat. I'm Zenbach, and you are? I'm Patrick Thomas. Patrick Thomas. Well, I got some nice art behind me. Uh, talk to you. What you got here? Uh, these are copies of my uh, three books. My most recent book is Murphy's Law, which is actually directly behind me here. Uh, this was just released uh, back in May. It's a collection of 18 short stories that take place in a bar in Manhattan which is uh, owned by a leprechaun. Uh, Hercules is one of the bouncers. Uh, Dionysus got a wine as one of the bartenders. And various people of myth and legend uh, come in and out of the bar, and the story happens based on that. The leprechaun bought the bar with his pot of gold. So rainbows, instead of leading people to a pot of gold, lead people to the bar where they can find a good drink, uh, shoulder to cry on, and someone to help them out of some trouble. A friendly leprechaun. A friendly leprechaun. He's, he's, uh, he actually ended up marrying a mortal woman. Uh, years back and it kind of meddled him a little bit. He's not so much of the trickster anymore. Somebody, uh, somebody's child at one of the conventions said to the mom, look at that man over there. He's got ears like a leprechaun. And the mother said, shh, don't make fun of him. I just thought <laughs> I'd pass that on. Well, that's good. All you need is the top hat and be about a foot and a half shorter. Right. My son likes a movie about a leprechaun, but he's not a... Uh, well, anyway. So what else you got? That's, that's the, the that's Murphy's the Law. And Exile Entrance was my first book. That's been out a while. That's a story of a man who the United States government basically has uh, kidnapped and sold into alien servitude. He gets dropped onto another planet into the equivalent of uh, outer space professional wrestling. And he's a nonviolent man by nature. He has to learn how to fight. He ends up saving a young human girl. He has to learn how to make friends among the aliens, learn, adopt a totally different lifestyle. And uh, he falls in love, of course. And uh, it's a mixture of humor, horror, pathos, uh, just a little bit of everything. Wow. So, and the last book I co-wrote under an alias right. uh, is Evermore. It's uh, one reviewer described it as on Golden Pond uh, meets Outbreak. It's two love stories, uh, and there's a plague involved. So there's action, there's adventure, there's romance. And actually, this one uh, had been approached uh, about movie rights. So with any luck, uh, in two or three years, a small uh, independent uh, production company may be doing the movie version of Evermore. Good. Maybe we get the music or uh, get it. Well, anyway, we act too, you know. Well, whatever, whatever. Yeah, it's worth a shot. So let me ask you, whereabouts you come from? What strange uh, place do you come from? I come from Long Island. I'm uh, a Long Islander. Hey, guys. <laughs> I grew up in uh, Farmingdale, graduated from Farmingdale High School, uh, went away to school, became a physical therapist, spent about three and a half years wandering around the country uh, uh, for a job which someone paid my way and uh, got to... Uh, live off the land, so to speak, so it worked out rather nicely, and somehow I ended up back on Long Island. Back on Long Island, you know. Well, this is great, you know. We have a show out on Long Island, you know that? Yes, actually, I've seen your show uh, one time, the one on the cable. Yeah. yeah, right, right. We're out in the Woodbury area, which we've just got to a weekly point there. Well, I really appreciate the time you're giving me. Oh, my pleasure. You know, and perhaps we can bring you into the ship and do some stuff out on the island as well. We're, we're, we're not that far. I mean, you know. I'm sure I could talk to the publisher into getting some books uh, to give out on the show, that kind of thing. So, 
sure. I could autograph them and we could do something like that. Oh, and before we go, I'll talk about t-shirts. You get a nice oh, little okay. t-shirt. This is, this is actually my publisher. This is Padwolf Publishing. Actually, we got some over here as I knock down the display. Here. All righty. And they're a publisher of science fiction and fantasy books. Where am I? Hello. Hello. Where are my weapons? Okay. Okay. Who let are me, you? Let me explain. Let me explain. I'll take this from you. Everything's cool. Come here. My name is Zenbach. And you are. Relax, relax. I know there's no weapons. I'll explain everything. You're really in quite good hands. You are. I am Zenbach. I'm Athene. Athene. We have moved you from your feast by what they call a transporter beam from the future. So you are a sorcerer elf? Sort of. It's sort of a technological thing. It's, it's an advanced civilization from a time in the future, years ahead of you. And we brought you here to say hello. 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 You know, we'll return you to your weapons and, you know, so you were having you think a... I'm helpless without my weapons? N no, lady. I'm not. No, lady. I don't think there's anything helpless about you. In fact, I wanted you to meet my friends. We have, we have a world of people that you, you will not... All right, now, now listen, listen. There is like a lake of water people have in their homes that shows pictures. A scrying pool. Yeah, it's sort of a, like, a, like a mirror to meditate except for our image goes into this this viewing screen a screen to view and, and, and that that thing, thing that thing it. that thing yes it transports it and and people are watching us so right now you could say hello to people out there on and, and i have a thing called um how to explain this like a play we call it a, we call it a show i see and we have people watching us and we are on zenbox that's me zenbox fantasy five and you are certainly a fantasy. I was at a feast in Samaria with King Andra, and he is not going to be pleased that I left the high table, especially since I am vying for his hand. Oh, well, all right, now listen, Here, here's what's going to happen. We're going to return you to that very moment in time. To that very, we're going to take you and transport you right back, but we're going to send you back with a gift for him. I don't much care for magic. Well, all right. This, this, this is good. This is good. You're gonna. I'm giving you a museum item. I'm giving you a futuristic item of something from the past. Picture this. Something from a long time ago is here now, in my time. Okay. And you're gonna try and take it back with you and give him an item that's very old, very worth a lot of money. Money to us is, um, well, I don't know. It's a barter tool, but it has a high value. And you can give him a gift. He'll like this. Yeah. Very well. All right. Here's here's what I'm going to give you. This here, ah. this here, is from Egypt, the land, Lovely. the land of the pharaohs, and we have in here, they put uh, oils, and a little fire. We use ah. fire sticks. We have, fire. yeah, we have fire sticks. We call them lighters. All right, and we use these fire sticks and we shh, like this, and then the oil stays in here and it it burns and. So this, this here comes from a pharaoh, wow. and, and then we brought you here to give you this to take back. A gift like this will surely win his hand for me. Well, that's what I was figuring. So there I have you. I'm going to let you go now. So you're going to be going back. Your, your weapons will be kind of like laying in front of you. You'll have to pick them up. You won't be wearing them when you get them. My armor will still be. The armor will be right by your feet. My when, you get, when you get back there, the armor will be right by your feet. The armor I'm wearing. Yes. Well, the when you wear, yeah, I certainly hope so. Oh. You know, no. But all right, now just stand very well here. I'm going to get out so I don't travel back with you. And perhaps we will meet again at another time, and you can meet some of my people from the future. In the future, if you choose to transport me, yes, you must give me notice ahead of time. We'll transport. We'll transport a written scroll that we're coming. We can transport that. A little written scroll, I will leave, and then you'll know I'm coming. I'll give you a date and a time. I so don't we, read, we, but you don't read? I don't read. All right, we'll we'll find someone there who can read Latin, all right. and we'll get this to you a message, and then you'll know. All righty. Very well. So, farewell. Farewell.
Okay, here we go. I'm going to get out of here because I don't want to get involved here with this transport thing. I'm going to be in a wrong time. Okay, here goes. Well, that was kind of interesting. Um, I want you people to know that wasn't Xena. Uh, in our days, I think Xena got it, got the idea from going back in the past herself and finding out what a real warrior was. Um, that woman, by the way, um, I've been checking into. She's very, very powerful. Um, she wields a sword you would not believe. I saw her in battle when I was passing by. And I'll tell you, fellas, you got to be very careful with a lady like that. You make the wrong move and, whoosh, you know, it, it's, it's just unbelievable. Anyway, I'm going to go around and check on what's going on around here. This is Massachusetts. This is a place. It's a big college. Um, the kids here are having a ball, and we've got um, some authors. We have a couple of artists, T-shirt artists. Uh, we have uh, some magazines. We have some people to meet, some places to go, more faces. So I'm going to take a walk this way, and, well, you'll be following me in a minute. I've been checking out T-shirts at Dragon's Lair for a long time, and I really get a kick out of some of the stuff I see. And I'm lucky. I actually have the man, the artist, who does all this beautiful stuff. And we'll show you some of the art and get into that. But first, I want to do a little interview here. I am Zenbach, and you are? I am Prof. Prof? Prof, as in Professor. Professor. Professor, talk to me for a few minutes here. I've been admiring your art for a long time. Um, Ed over there has been having, showing me some art, and it's mm -hmm. been, you know, talk to me. What, what gives you, you know, how did you get into it, and, and why did you do it? I mean, something you're, you're from the heart, or what's the reasons for doing it? Oh, yeah, I always, always love fantasy and the whole genre of it, and dragons are one of my favorite things to do as well. And I just enjoy drawing the things. I'm an avid comic fan, too, so that had a lot to do with uh, me getting into the artwork as well. I notice the coloring that we see in this. The coloring has a, a certain magic to it. It's the, the, the greens, the blues, the reds, the yellows, the orange. Everything is like a very hot uh, type of color. Uh, yeah, some of that's... I don't know. It's hard to explain. It just kind of comes natural. <laughs> it's a natural thing for you. Yeah. You know, when they do these into T-shirts, you know, for you, is it, a, is it a kind of a joy to see the shirts come out and come alive? Oh, yeah. It's like I've always like loved going seeing T-shirts, and it's like, well... I'd like to see something more like this, and then I've actually had the chance to create something what I'd like to see and put it out there to the public. You, When you work with a piece of uh, design, do the old designs start to become... In, uh, uh, what I'm trying to say is you're more interested in the new stuff and the old stuff as an artist just gets pushed aside, or does each one keep that passion when you look at it, when you're looking at stuff back? Well, some of the old stuff. And some of the old stuff was like, well, that's, that was then. Uh, it's done. Try to do something new. Or right, because I, I noticed that a lot of the artists, it's always the thing they're doing now that's usually the thing that's really got them psyched. And the other stuff, usually the, the, the creativity is, keeps you fired. And when the other stuff gets done, it's like a done deal, you know. Well, it's kind of, it's like, you know, as, as speaking from the artist's point of view, it's like you're looking at this all the time. Right. And you, you've, like, pretty much worked on it for days, hours, weeks, whatever. And so you're looking at it all this, you know, it's like taking a picture and sticking it in front of your face for like a week or so. It's like at the end of that week, someone says, oh, what do you think? Do you still like this as much? And it's like some people are going, oh, I'm kind of sick of it by now. And then wow. I, want, I want to move on and do something new. I have another idea. Yeah, well, I love the shirts. Well, and we're, we're going to do is we're going to talk about a couple of designs and show our view as the designs. So, well, well, we'll take a look and see what this one is. Um, this one's the uh, Medusa skull. Uh, I always had this idea of, you always see portrayals of Medusa and stuff with the flesh on it, with the snake. And I just thought it would be kind of neat to see what the actual skull would look like, because you'd see all the snake skeletons and stuff, which make a nice, de nice design element going on. Um, this one was like one of my favorites that I had thought about for a long time, before I actually had to put it to actual product. The snakes and stuff roll over to the back of it as well roll over the sleeve. Uh, print, it was printed from uh, Liquid Blue, which is uh, one of the top name companies for doing t-shirt design and printing. I worked for them for a few years. Um, this one over here is uh, what they have named the Prof Sun Moon. And it's just a, a Sun Moon shirt like you see all over the place, but it just 
have my own style put into it instead for the sun moon. You have your angry looking sun and uh, on the back. You have my uh, the moon side there with the grumpy moon. It's a little bit taken from one of the early 19, 1900 films there from the rocket ship to the moon. I think it was. I forget the name exactly, but that's where I took the idea of the rocket ship crashing into him and him looking a little bit irritated from it. Kind of like Vulcan when people invade them by mistake or just crash land on their planets, they wouldn't be too happy either. And this was the, uh, actually this was the first design that I did while well, working at Liquid Blue, the dragon shirt. Um, and it was actually one of the most successful and most widely known pieces that I've done. Uh, many people wear it. It's been sold, sold it sells great. It's been saying, selling like gangbusters. But, uh, this was actually the first design that I did for the company. We have your dragon attacking in the front, and of course you have your knight going to meet the challenge in the back, and the outcome pretty much is up to you. Uh, this is one of the most extreme shirts I've done. This is uh, called Overload. And um, this was just, it started out in a sketchbook form one night when I was I used to work a graveyard shift and I just had one strip going down the side with the wires and all and of course the whole idea was trying to stay awake waiting for the truck to unload which is you get your eye there with the arms and legs trying to keep itself awake pushing the eye up, eyeball open um, I just basically took that one little strip of sketch work and elaborated on it to make it the entire shirt to fit and as you can see the front's looking pretty crazy He's all melting away on one side, the wires are all stripping out, and his head's on fire. But in the back, you kind of see a little more reason why. And it's more like he's blown a gasket, and you have all your gears and stuff flying everywhere, which kind of like sum up the whole front. I always like adding lots of little detail work and stuff, which, which a lot of people seem to enjoy as well. Um, lots of little things like the bolts in the back of his vertebrae. Just adding all little doohickeys here and there. Making the gear workings and all. It was a lot of fun to design. It took, it took quite a while of designing to have it printed out finally. And uh, the other one I have here is the sequel shirt, you could say, to the dragon. Which is Dragon Duel. So we have the second dragon shirt, so why not have two dragons? So here we have the blue dragon and the red dragon having a little fight up in the air. And... On the back, you can see the person who is kind of on the losing end now and is trying to take off from the battle. As he flies away, you can see the red's talons closing in on him. And once again, you don't know the outcome. <laughs> I like leaving my shirts open-ended so, uh, you know, the viewer can make their own, their own happy ending to it or sad ending or whatever they want. Well, I love looking at your stuff and I get to see the, the, the man behind all the art. And all. I hope it's a successful show. And, uh, you know, I take it you want to down the line, want to get more stuff done, maybe your own uh, your own business or franchise at the art? Oh, yeah. It's like I'd love to get some more stuff out, show yeah. more people. You know, more designs, that's the whole name of the game. You know, it's a big planet. A lot of people are into it. <laughs> and where I come from and back home where my dad is, you know, they get a big kick out of this. As a matter of fact, we ought to get you on Vulcan. We'll see what you can create over there. Yeah, sure, I just see, see what they are. the Vulcan people are into and then put my own style to it. All righty. <laughs> um, if somebody wanted to get to you, they have a way of getting to you, any kind of a, oh, I don't know, a, the computer thing these days or any of that kind of stuff? Um, yeah, I could be with you an email. Can okay, you give me the email address for, for information only on what his art's about? Um, it's prof at profitmedia. That's P-R-O-P-H-E-T, media.com. All righty, and this way they can get to you for information on your art. Well, I thank you for being on Zenbox Fantasy Fi. Thank you. And we're going to go check out and see what else is going on around here. Hello, I'm Zenbox, and you are? I'm Heather. Heather, what brings you here to this fine convention? Well, I'm here with one of the vendors that's uh, Graven Images. We make uh, vampire fangs, do medieval costuming, and such the like. Uh, one of our biggest uh, dealers, or sources right now is for the LARPs, uh, vampire LARPs and so on and so forth. To my people, what is LARPs? 
uh, live action role playing system. Um, it's basically very similar to the tabletop version, but you actually get to get up and act out what you're doing, dress up in costume, and have a lot of fun. They don't do any fighting or anything, the vampires? No, no, it's, it's verbal. We use uh, rock, paper, scissors as a standard. You know, if, we, if I were to, my character were to, say, hit yours, mm -hmm. I would use rock, paper, scissors, best two out of three, to determine whether I actually hit you or not. We don't, uh, you know, <laughs> don't actually haul off and hit anybody. Are the uh, gaming type of things standard from convention to convention? Is it a standard type of game format? Yes, um, there are standard rules for each game. There are a couple of, you know, there's different systems for every game out there, uh, especially in the LARPs. You have several organizations that have similar guidelines, but there are minor differences. In the gaming, I take it, I've, I've seen it in uh, Maryland, and I've seen it down Virginia, so I take it this goes across the country, probably. All over the world, actually. All there are the role-playing systems all over the world, and there are role-playing systems for every genre you can imagine. Name it, there's at least two or three gaming systems for it. You know what they do in, in Vulcan sometimes? What do they do? They have a role-playing game, they act like humans. <laughs> you know, you know, they get the whole range of human behavior. You never know what that's about, but you know, it's a human thing. You know. That could be interesting. You know. Well, you you look to me like you're ready to go out and invite somebody there. Nice set of fangs you got. Getting there, there getting there. <laughs> you know, a few more hours. Got to wait till the sun sets. Yeah, you know, well. Not usually out during daylight hours. It's very draining. You look very pale today too. No sun today, huh? Mm, no, <laughs> try to avoid that. Stay inside where there's no windows. Right, and so basically we can ha handle the day as long as we get away from that sun. Right. Right. That's why we're in the... Burned so easily. <laughs> we're in the basement. Yeah, I saw a movie and they just kind of burned away, but we're in the basement here, and it's been, you know, other than these man-made light bulb things up there, you know. That's or a great invention. Don't, uh... <laughs> they don't bother you, huh? No. Yeah, I, I don't mind them. They hum a little bit. They make my Vulcan ears ring, but, you know. But, uh, anyway, it was an interesting convention, and, uh... I hear that you may be doing uh, another one from New Jersey, maybe, maybe hitting on Chiller? Yes, yes, Chiller, that'll be in uh, Halloween weekend, uh, that'll be in Secaucus, and uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. It's supposed to be a very, uh, very hot show, a lot of uh, big names. Um, I'm especially looking forward to meeting Tom Savini, who will be there. Yeah, I know kind of Tom, met him. Yeah. Kind of a nice guy. He's, he seems decent enough. Yeah. So. He's got a very macabre sense of humor should fit right in. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> well, I appreciate you for being on Zenbox Fantasy Fi. Thank you so much. And Mary Part. Hi, I'm Zenbox, and you are? My name's Marissa. Marissa. You know, see this here? Yeah. I, got a, I got a little mermaid. I saw your eyes catching this before. Really you know? great. Yeah, what do you think? I think it's beautiful. It's great. I mean, she's in a really neat position. I would not have expected to see a mermaid up like that. Yeah, and she's balancing a chalice. It's really neat. Yeah. They had a party the other night here, and uh, they had all kinds of good stuff to put in the chalice. I should have taken it with me in one of the rooms. <laughs> they have a lot of parties, you know, in the conventions. Yeah, probably a lot of wine, a lot of beer, a lot of mixed drinks. <laughs> you know, Vulcans, we don't drink. And we don't drink when we drive either to the police out there, out in the Suffolk County. We never happen. But I do appreciate you guys checking on me. But uh, she, yeah, she's kind of cute. I kind of like that, you know. So you ever, you ever do any sketching or anything with mermaids? Yeah, I used to do some sketching with mermaids. I don't know. I was always a, kind of with the long hair thing. They were just always very beautiful to me, just the curves and the long hair and the fact that they always swam in the ocean and their movements were always so flowing. And Yeah, so you can, like, the, the poetry of the body movement and the hair and the, you know. Yeah, I've always had a thing for mermaids. I've got one out in Long Island that I, I kind of know. We don't really let everybody know about it, but there are mermaids out in Long Island Sound. I yeah. would believe that. Yeah, well, they come to Connecticut. They haven't worked their way up here, but uh, you never know. But we're right now in day three of the convention, yep. and um, it's been an interesting convention. This is a convention you get to really meet a lot of the artists, and talk to them, see what they do, and uh, you know. So, did you meet anybody? You see anything you particularly liked? Besides yeah. Vulcan? <laughs> oh yeah, love Vulcan. <laughs> I like all the costuming. The costuming is really neat, just because. It's very different. I like your costume. It oh, works for me. It works much. for me. Yeah. <laughs> well, hello there. Allison, how are you doing? Hey, Zed Bach, I'm fine. Oh, well, uh, thank you for inviting me to your convention. I had a great time. Great. Thank you very much for being here. You know, so, talk to me a little bit about this uh, this convention here. A lot of work, huh? 
you better believe it. And I definitely couldn't do it alone. A um, lot of lot of effort went into this on the part of uh, quite a few students, um, faculty. Big college. Big college, yeah. UMass is about uh, 26,000 students, uh, grads and undergrads. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and, and they had other activities, so there was a lot of stuff going on outside too. Yeah, uh, homecoming decided they loved our weekend so much they just they they wanted to to be here too. So in other words, we had the the big thing here, the convention, and they put this little homecoming thing together. So you know. Yeah, you know, it was a small deal, but hmm. hey. Did yeah, you really get around? I, I met you up in uh, RebelCon. Yeah, that was that was a pretty good show. Yeah. That was in uh, Taunton, Massachusetts, Southern yeah. Massachusetts. Yeah. So, did you have fun there? Yeah, I did. Uh, I had a good time. Um, got to see a lot of people I hadn't seen for a while. Yeah, yeah, it was it was great. And I appreciate you letting me bring the Galactic Boogie Band and get the whole band to play. We we like to go out and play. It was a, our, it's our big thing. <laughs> we we had a great time listening. You guys you put on a great show last night. Um, we'd, we'd definitely like to have you back next year. Oh, we'll definitely want to come back here, and maybe we get some of my viewers to come in, and maybe we pick up a few viewers in this area, too. That'd be great. You know, so you know what's amazing about this? I've been seeing a lot of cons, mm -hmm. all right? And first of all, you're the youngest one to run a con that I've seen of this size. Mm -hmm. And it's amazing, it's, it's Sunday. Yes, it is. <laughs> she's smiling. <laughs> look, 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 she's smiling. There's a camera. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, uh, this is rare. In New York, we, when you're on a con, and at the end of the con, they run around like, oh, no, they hide from everybody. But you've been, you've been out front, and you've been here, and I'm, I'm very impressed. You did a great job. Thank you very much. You know, very friendly, and I had a great time. The band had a great time. We definitely look forward to coming back. And the sad part is beaming us out of here and going back. I wish we could kind of keep everything I here. I know. You guys could go to classes with us. Yeah, well, like that. well, I'd like to do that. You know, maybe we could even lecture on the Egyptology or some of the strange cultures of Earth. That'd some, be good. You know, some usual, unusual um, Earth customs, you know. I went to a party the other night. They had a party, you know, yeah. a, a room party. A know? little party, a small party. I right. think I was there. I think yeah. I saw you there. What's interesting is that Vulcans don't drink alcohol. And this party had lots of unusual liquid for me that I had, you know, and I had, I had a great time with that. And um, a few of the people looked like they were in spirit, and they had a good time, too. Yes, yes, many people had a very grand time at Oz Fontecchio's party. So, um, all righty, well, do you have anything you'd like to say to anybody? Uh, Absolutely. Um, the NJAC 14, not just another con 14, will be uh, September 18th to 20th, 1998. And uh, it'll be at UMass Amherst. And uh, check out our website at www.umass.edu slash RSO slash scum. And that means science fiction conventioneers of UMass. Yeah, I won't touch that line. <laughs> but and one other thing. Oh, certainly. And uh, I want to thank everybody for helping out with the convention. And I want to thank you for being here, Zenbach. Well, I really appreciate it, my dear. This is another thing we do in Vulcan. <laughs> well, ah, Zimbach gets the honeys. You know, I had a great time. We're definitely coming back. Thank you. Terrific. Thank All righty, thank you. Okay, guys, we're going to get out of here, and uh, we'll be beaming out in a few minutes. So, uh, you know, maybe we'll beam out now. Let's, do, let's, let's see if we can do a beam out now. <laughs> Might be the thing to do. Um, well, let's see. Before I beam out, I just want to mention that uh, Tybok wanted to come. I couldn't bring Tybok. Uh, he had some responsibilities and he had to take care of, and um, these things do happen for little guys. And, uh, well, next year maybe we'll get him here. I'm beaming. <laughs>